we shall discuss identity theorem and some examples based on this identity theorem in complex analysis so let us see the statement of identity theorem let d be a domain or region in c right it means what it's a it's an open connected subset of c both the words are used domain or region if f is a function on d which is analytic uh, the functions analytic which are also called holomorphic functions so if f from d to c is analytic and if zf the set of zeros of f zf means the set of all z in d such that f of z equal to 0 so if f is analytic on d and if the set of zeros of f has a limit point in d then this theorem says that the function is identically zero means f of z equal to zero for all z in d so uh, we see the corollary of this theorem it says this one let d be a domain if we have two functions f and g which are analytic on the domain d and if the set z in d such that f of z f of z equal to g of z has a limit point in d means the set of points where the functions f and g are equal if this set has a limit point in d then the functions f and g are equal means f of z equals g of z for all z in d uh, this corollary can be proved easily what we do in proving this corollary you take h the function h to be f minus g then f minus g will become analytic and the set of zeros of h is precisely this set namely all those z in d such that f, f of z equal to g of z and so by identity theorem the function h will become zero and that means f equal to g so as I said earlier we are going to see some examples based on this so we we go for the first example let G be a region and let F and G from G to C be analytic if the product of F and G is 0 means if F of Z into G of Z equal to 0 for all Z in the region capital G then either the function f is identically 0 or g is identically 0 this question can also be framed in another way let us see how so if we consider the ring if we consider the ring of all holomorphic functions on g then we know, know that it is a commutative ring with unity uh, what is the unit there the function ez equals 1 for all z in g that is the identity multiplicative identity uh, so this uh, result says that the ring of all holomorphic functions on a region G is an integral domain that means integral do domain so only we need to pr prove one condition namely if a into b is 0 then either a is 0 or b is 0 that is what precisely we want to show here we are given that f into g is 0 then we have to show either f is 0 or g is 0 ok so now we, we have to show the either the function f is 0 or g is 0 so how we will prove it we assume that f is not equal to 0 and then we are going to show that the function g is 0 so as I said we assume that f is not equal to 0 means f is not identically zero function so it will be non-zero at some point then we, we get some a in g such that f of a not equal to zero right and it is known to us that uh, every analytic function is continuous so the function f is continuous at a point a and because f is continuous at a and f of a not equal to 0 the function will be non-zero in a neighborhood of a 
so as I said by continuity of f we get some r greater than 0 such that what f of z not equal to 0 for every z in this ball ball this b a r means it is a collection of all complex numbers z such that mode of z minus a is less than capital R so because f of a is non-zero and f is continuous at a we get some ball about a such that f of z not equal to zero for any z in b a r okay now what is known to us f into g is zero on g means f of z into g of z equal to zero for every z in g so in particular if we take any z from this b a r then f z into g z is zero but it is known to us that f of z not equal to zero for any z in b a r so what we are going to get g of z equal to zero for every z in b a r right so the ball b a r is contained in the set of zeros of g why because we have shown that for every z in b a r g of z is zero so b a r is subset of the set of zeros of g and g is analytic small g is analytic on capital g and g is a region right we also know that uh, b a r has a limit point in fact every point of b a r is a limit point of b a r so in particular a small a is a limit point of b a r and small a is an element of capital g right and because b a r subset of the set of zeros of g so a is also a limit point of the set of zeros of g and so by identity theorem g is a zero function and thus we have shown that if g is a region f and g are analytic function on capital g and if f and g f into g is zero then either the function f is zero or the function g is zero let us see the next example let g be a region let f and g from capital g to c be analytic suppose that the function f bar the conjugate of f into g is analytic on g then we need to show that either f is a constant function or the function g is zero again let us see what is the statement g is a region f and g are analytic functions on capital g and we are given that the function f bar into g is analytic then we have to show that either the function f is constant or g is zero so again we i mean we, we have to show that either f is constant or g is zero so we assume that one of these two statements is not true and we prove the other statement so we assume that g is not equal to zero and then our aim is to show that the function f is constant okay because the function g is not equal to zero means g is not identically zero map so it will be non-zero at some point of capital g and so we get some a in g such that g of a not equal to zero so as we have done in the previous example by continuity of the function g we get some r positive such that g of z not equal to zero for any z in the ball b a r and this ball is contained in g okay now because the function g is nowhere g zero and g is analytic one upon g is analytic on the ball b a r g of z is not equal to 0 for any z in b a r the so the map 1 upon g will be analytic on the ball b a r now what is known to us f bar g is analytic on whole g 
so f bar g is analytic on every open subset of g so in particular the function f bar g will be analytic on the ball b a r now it is known to us that 1 upon g is also analytic on the ball b a r and the function f bar g is also analytic on the ball b a r so their multiplication f bar g into 1 by g that is also analytic on the ball b a r but the product will be f bar so what we have shown so we have shown that the functions f and f bar are analytic on b a r and we know that b a r is a domain and it is known to us that if a function f is analytic if uh, a function f and its conjugate both are analytic on a domain then the function f is a constant function so that is what happening here f is analytic f bar is analytic on b a r and b a r is a domain and so the function f is constant say f is a constant function c means f of z equal to c for every z in b a r ok uh, we also note that the function f of z minus c is analytic on whole g and one can see that this ball uh, b a r is subset of all those z in g such that f of z minus c equal to 0 how because already we have shown that f of z equal to c for every z in b a r and therefore b a r is subset of the set of zeros of an analytic function f minus c now the set b a r has a limit point namely a which is in the region g so by identity theorem what we are going to get the function f minus c is identically zero and that means f of z equal to c for every z in g and this proves what the function f is a constant map let us see another example ok so we introduce this notation let d stands for the open unit disk in the complex plane means it contains all those z in c such that mode of z less than 1 what do we want we want to find out all analytic functions f from d to c which satisfies f of 1 by n equals 1 upon 1 plus n right so how can one find out such functions see now one can see that I um, mean by using this relation f of 1 by n is same as 1 by n divided by 1 by n plus 1 right so our natural guess for a function is f of z equal to z upon z plus 1 ok so we we are interested in finding out all analytic functions which satisfy this condition and we, we have taken n greater than or equal to 2 why because the point 1 is not in the open disk so let f from d to c be an analytic function such that f of 1 by n equals 1 upon 1 plus n for all n greater than or equal to 2 now we define c uh, why I mean we, we are guessing this because from this formula we can see that f of 1 by n is same as 1 by n divided by 1 by n plus 1 so uh, we, we have this guess so we define g from d to c by g of z equals z upon z plus 1 now the the function g has only one singularity namely minus 1 but minus 1 is not in d and therefore the function g is analytic on d right and also one can see that g of 1 by n is same as 1 upon 1 plus n for every n uh, which is not equal to for every